Hello and welcome back. I am Dr. Abstract and this is our second Zim Kids video to help teachers through the site here so that they can teach kids how to code. So if you haven't seen the other video, go to uh, the Zim Teach section and check out the first video. In this video, we're going to take a look a little bit more at the editor here in the tutorials and also the editor in Slate where we can, the kids can make their own scenes and we can also bring in our own files to teach the kids. So that's what we're doing in this video. Most of these are all, pretty well all of them, just start with a blank screen when we do a test. However, this one, this very first one, doesn't start with a blank screen. Instead, when we hit test, we get this extra stuff added that the kids don't need to code but they'll be able to use. This is so that we can show variables in this message box and also talk about x and y coordinates. So for instance, var x is equal to 200. And then we can say message.text is equal to x. And that shows that we've stored 200 in x in test. And it shows up in this little message box. We could have used the JavaScript console, but rather than teach the kids about the console, this was probably the most visual easy way. And with respect to the grid here, that helps them understand that x goes positive to the right and y goes positive down, starting at zero in the top left corner. So that's fairly traditional, uh, although it's a little bit different than your math Cartesian coordinates. So that's why it's important to mention here. So we could go something like new rectangle and make it 100 by 100 and red. And we can dot loc. Loc is one of the ways that we can locate something at 200, 200, and test. And now we have a 100 by 100 rectangle at position 200 in the X and 200 in the Y. Level 2 also has something that is added. For instance, if we now test in level 2, oh, message is not defined. That's interesting. If we test with no code in level 2, we get this extra stuff right here. So that would look like new poly is what it's we're asking to do and we'll dot center it. I think it was scaling it too, but anyway, there's a poly and this is supposed to increase the poly, but you follow the instructions and just call it var poly is equal. And as soon as it's called poly like that, now the number stepper will connect. That's showing that we're activating the, var the variable called poly with our number stepper. In level three, we also have something that is different, and that is this color picker, where we can select an object and change colors. So the kids will make the shapes, and the color picker will change the color, but they didn't need to code the color picker. So, like I said, the very first one here has those three extra things to help us just get started with some of that. The rest of them, if I press in here, uh, sure enough, there is something here, but that's because we're looking at the sample. If I hit test, oh, I've got a blob here. Uh, if I hit test with nothing, we get nothing. Um, the, uh, well, hey, do you want to see a blob? <laughs> so we could go new blob and type over here and dot center and we hit test and that shows a blob here on the screen. So that's one of the Zim shapes. It's a special one where we get to control the edges. It's quite magical as a matter of fact. You can double click on here and get the uh, different type of handle. Double click again and it makes no handle. So if I double click through, there's a couple no handles. <laughs> They're very straight corners. Double click again and we get to an even. So that's one of the things. There's also ways to, um, for instance, if I just click on hold, hold on it, like uh, click and hold, boop, it disappears. Uh, what else? You can multiple, anyway, there's different things you can do with the blobs. There's also a squiggle, which works the same way, squiggle. But the purpose of this is not to really show you all that can be done with Zim. Uh, I just happened to see a blob <laughs> sitting there. Okay, so the squiggle works the same way, two kind of magical shapes in Zim. So like I said, most of the other ones here just start with a blank screen. I think there might be one other that starts with something special, but um, so be it. Now let's go to Slate. Slate is available here. And we'll talk about what is happening um, with Slate. It looks like we're all set up to have a balance of the boxes here. Uh, it's a puzzle where you try and oh, balance these things all at the same time. But anyway, you can, that's one of the badges. 
Um, let's just clear that for now. Yes. So, oh, we also have a backing in here. In Slate, there's these things called assets, and here they all are. So why don't I clear them? Yes, so that's that one cleared. Or we could have cleared all the assets. And then here's assets for nature, the people, things, and also sounds that, uh, that you could play. There's a help. So here's help on how to use the access uh, assets. Sorry, adding the there's just adding a background color. Here's adding a background picture. Uh, here's adding just pictures rather than backgrounds. Okay, using containers, adding sounds, backing sounds, and adding sprites as well. There's a few animated sprites in there. All right, so let's just go through uh, an example. Here's a beach. So I've clicked on beach and hit save. Up in the top of Slate, it says, ah, we've included some assets, backings, uh, beach. So the way we use that, and we would look at the help to do that, and we would say something like new pick, like so. We would put in beach, and this was beach 01, that's the name of it, and dot center, for instance, test. Now we have a beach on the stage. Sometimes for the backgrounds like that, and it, uh, you can read it through it in the help, but we might want to scale to the stage. So scale two. If you just tuck in a scale two like that, then it will scale it so that it fits within the whole of the screen there, which is nice. This is our stage that we're looking at. Okay, so that's a stage that just fits inside of our, our little window over here. Um, good. Now, how do we add our own files to show the kids? Uh, we, I think, went through badges a little bit. Um, badges are where they can start typing. Uh, there's also zaps. So when we looked on, under badges, we saw how we could get a list of the answers in here. And that's kind of like what we're going to talk about now. How do we get files to show up in zaps? We already have some demos here, and that lets the kids play with various things, um, such as uh, there, well, there's the block that we could have been playing with. Uh, a drag and drop. Here's a drag and drop. Whee! Okay, so they get to play with that. They can look at the code, like so. And then if they want, they can copy the code over. And so we're going to overwrite our code with this code, and then we can test it. So you see the value of that. We can have a bunch of examples in here that the kids can look at and, and play around with. All right, so how do we get our own files in here? We would go to the Zim Editor, so that's a click to the editor. And the editor is very much like Slate. As a matter of fact, it was built based on Slate. Uh, but the editor also adds the ability to log in and save files and save lists of files. So you as the teacher can log in here. Right, kids can log in too if you really want them to log in. You're welcome to have them log in and use the editor. Depends on how old they are maybe. Um, so there's the, the sign up. You might want to put your school there if, um, if you're out of school. Uh, it requires an email though. That's why we didn't really want to force it on uh, the, um, the kids and you and your classes. Uh, so you can make things in Slate without logging in, and that's great. You can even save them to the computer with the save button. But if you want your files, here's how you do it. So I'm just gonna sign in now. I'm signed in. My files are, here's how you can make a file. Here's all the files that I have. There's the badges files, etc., and I can load those. Underneath the zaps here, once you're logged in, you will have, uh, let me just hide all, you'll have the demos that, that come with. So these are the demos that come with the editor. There's more demos than with the kids. Then you'll have your saved files. So I have, here's a list of all of my files. Okay, so these are the files that I've been making. And then you've got lists. So here's uh, a, <laughs> a list of all my lists. Here's the list of badges right here. So I can make that list by, uh, there's a couple different ways. One is any file that you want. For instance, this cute little drone, there it is. Um, any file that you want, I can hit that. And what that does is it adds it to my uh, saved files. So they're here somewhere. List saved, oh, saved is underneath. Here it is, faves. Okay, so I hit copy like that. And then 
uh, the, the, the things show up here and I can name my list and make a list. Why don't you look at the guide though? And in the guide, there's a video right here that takes you through all of this stuff. This wasn't really how to make lists exactly in the editor. There's another video for that. But what I wanna do is show you if you had a list, how you can get that to show up in the Zim Kids. So we have a list here called badges and you hit the share button like so. This will give us the links that we can share in the editor. This will give us a links that we can share in the Zim Kids. There's three different share URLs. One is called Zaps, and what that does is it will show your list up top, and then all of the uh, other demos, the other Zaps that were already in the editor. However, if you want the kids to concentrate more on your list only, then you can use the Teach, and this will show only your list. But the things in that list, the kids will be able to copy over into the editor. If you choose the learn right here, you see how it's the same teach, but this is learn, then they won't be able to copy over. So why don't we take a look at those two? Let's look at the teach one first. Now in slate, so if you give the kids this URL, this is all that they would see. Oh, <laughs> you've just given them all the answers to the badges. <laughs> you, might, you might not want to do that. So uh, for instance, um, they could play the game like that. And then they could see the code for the game. This is the code for the game. And if they wanted to, they could copy this code over into here and play around with it. Okay, this is the game to try and find the jewel behind the door, which we found in a second. Okay, so you see how that works. They can copy that code. So if we go to the art and look at the code, they could select that, and copy and paste it over there, or drag it over, or, or they could use this little arrow. All right, so let's try the other one, which was called, what was it, learn. All right, so now this is a little bit different in that we have the stuff here as well. So if I go to game, and I go to code. So now we've got this. I can't, I don't have a little arrow. I can't drag, I can't copy and paste it. You'll find that that doesn't copy and paste. <laughs> All right, so in other words, the only solution they have is to type what they see there. All right, so we've talked about uh, how to bring in backings. We've seen how to bring in your own lists here. That's great. And anything else that we may have forgotten? Um, Note that here are the spells, and these are some common spells that you've got here, but there's a big long list. I don't think we ever showed you the big long list of spells. You can press on any of these to find out more about it. Like what does ALP do? ALP is short for alpha, and here's an example, and that's those are the parameters there. All right, so that's how the spells work. Oh, there's different... Um, there's different things. So what happens is when we look at zaps, like a puzzle, it locks these because that was forced in that thing. So we have to do our own side over here before these open up again. And then we can choose different sides, sizes. So there's a square one, here's a portrait one, and here's a portrait in a phone setting. And that's just if you want. We also have other libraries that we can bring in as well. So for instance, if we wanted this circle to fall to the ground, we would have to bring in physics. Then we could say dot add physics. Did you think it would be that easy? Test. Meow. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Now, if you wanted to drag just in physics, if you wanted to drag, we have to make a new physics first. So there's a new physics uh, const. Oh, we are using bars. You can use const. You're welcome to teach with const. Many of the demos might have const. Um, we've been trying to teach a bit of both. But anyway, there's var physics is equal to a new physics. Uh, this will work the same way like that, but one advantage is that you can say physics dot drag, for instance, oops, dot drag. And that's a little bit easier. We can also make this a bit bouncier, bounciness colon 0.7 goes up to one kind of and test and there that ball bounces a bit better and look at that and we can drag isn't that cool Whee! so that would give us an error if we didn't have physics oh physics is not defined okay because we're trying to use physics there's our error and so 
physics is now defined because we pressed on it. That's the idea. All right. Are you happy? I hope you're happy. So uh, once again, I am Dr. Abstract here at Zim Kids, and hopefully you'll find everything that you find that you need over here in the curriculum section. And you're welcome to contact us right here at the bottom Slack channel. If you have any questions about how you can use Zim in your curriculum, we'd be more than happy to help. We'd even do like a little video meet with you if you want. All right, all the best. Go teachers, go. Cheers. <laughs> Zim kids. Ciao.